forward down the field the lions lost to philly okay i don't know i don't i don't know uh, i don't know what i was going for with that intro lions lose big weekend of football in the state of michigan michigan state smokes akron michigan smokes hawaii and the detroit lions fall a little bit short to what i think is going to be a playoff contending nfc contending philadelphia eagles team let's start with the lions right like it's easy we could talk about state. We could talk about Michigan. It'll be jolly and good. Honestly, it'll probably be kind of boring because it's the same shit as last week. They played a couple more cupcakes, a couple more schools that are going to like the Troy High Schools of the world going, I guess we'll take you. And they got smacked by two heavyweight programs and U of M and MSU. That's not that fun, right? It's cool. It's cool fucking other teams. But then the game ends and you're like, eh, I kind of tuned out after the second quarter. It comes time to talk about it and it's like, well, what do we talk about? I mean, we were better than them literally every single aspect of the game. We're just much better. I, we killed them. We should have killed them. We killed them. That's it. That's it. The sun came up this morning. The sun's going to set tonight. Moon will be out reflecting the sun's light. Just shit that happens. I, it's just kind of the way the way it goes, I suppose. Um, so, no, we'll, we'll get into the MSU and Michigan, but that's not, you know, that's not what's got people blood boiling today. That's not the lead in. That's not why we're all here. That's not why you clicked on the Detroiter the second you saw that shit pop up in your feed. You know what we're going to say about those games. You clicked and came here to hear about the Detroit Lions to get a recap on the football game they played Sunday at Ford Field. Moment of silence against the Philadelphia Eagles. That's why everybody's here. The 38-35 loss that seems to have half of the Detroit Lions fan base saying it's never going to work just like that. Same old Lions. We stink. Sell the franchise. Cancel the season. Who cares? Why did we get hard knocks? Stan Campbell's an idiot. And then the other half of the franchise who's like, that was a pretty good game. The Lions of old eh, probably lose that by like three touchdowns or more. Um, in fact, the Lions of old, the Lions of last year, lost to a worse Philadelphia team by 38. So, like, pretty good, all things considered. You only lost by three. There were a handful of times throughout the game where the Lions easily could have mailed it in and said, you know what, Philly? Fucking curb stomp us. We don't want to be here. We're here. We played. We cashed our paychecks. Can you just put a bullet right here, Jalen Hurts? So many times the Lions could have done that. The defense in that fourth quarter so many times could have said, you already have 30 or 31. What's one more? You already have 38. What's one more? You already have 45. What's one more? So many times. The offense, after stalling three straight drives, three straight three and outs, could have said, it's just not our day. It's not working today. Whatever. Let's just run it three times and punt it again. Who gives? Jared Goff could have said, man, just not. don't quite have it today. Missing a couple open guys. I threw that pick six. You know what, Coach? Put David in, put, or uh, put uh, Boyle in, or put someone. I, I just don't really. Today might not be my day, Coach. You know what? So let me just give up. Let me just wave the white flag. It started out not ideally, not even that poorly. It just didn't start out perfectly ideally. And Coach, you know, man, I'm good, Coach. You know, let's just quit. Let's just give Philly the dub. How many times could the Lions have done that yesterday? How many fucking times could they have just rolled over and said, "Here you go." Here you go. Do whatever you want to me. Tie my hands and fucking have your way. How many times could they have done that? And they didn't. And they didn't. That's like half the reason I'm a little fired up. Obviously, I'm not happy they lost. I want them to win. That's the whole point. Sports, win. That's the fucking reason we're here, right? I have enough teams where it's like, eh, it's probably better if they lose. Tigers, Pistons, Red Wings, not so much anymore, but we've been in a lot of places with a lot of teams where it's like, yeah, I guess it's good to lose. And the point of sports is to win. You're not supposed to lose all your games. That's not how it's supposed to go. If you're doing a good job, you don't just lose all the time every year. That's not the way things work. That's not how sports are set up. If you're a Detroit fan and if you're one of the four major teams in the city, then that, yeah, that is pretty much how it goes, at least since 2015. Yeah, that's what's standard. Yeah, you, you play sports to lose and then get the highest draft pick um, and then lose again and get the next highest draft pick and then and lose again that next year and then another high draft pick and then lose again and so on and so forth. That's the way it kind of goes in Detroit. But the point of sports, win the game. So I'm not happy that they lost to the Eagles. I'm not sitting here going, yeah, everybody, the Lions are back. We're out of the Stone Age. We only lost by three to the Eagles. Let's throw a party. Best 
day ever. The Lions lost by three to what we think is a playoff team. Let's go. This is fucking sick. Nobody's doing that. Nobody's doing that. What I am doing is defending the wall, educating idiots on the internet, um, calling out losers. If you're being a loser, you're thinking, you're talking, you're acting like a loser. I'm going to tell you, you're a fucking loser. Do it if you'd like. I'm not going to force you to stop. I'm not going to even tell you to stop. I'm going to just say, oh, you're, hey, you're a loser. That's fine. You want to think like that? You're Okay. You're a loser. That's a fact. You can't argue with me. Sky's blue. You're a loser. That's it. That's all I, I'm obligated to do it. And the crazy, I don't even like being mean. Half the reason I started this is because like the internet, Twitter, social media in general, especially around sports, is so like polarizing. People are like, you either agree with me or you're an idiot. I, there are just some things, some stances where I can't help myself. Like if you're a Detroit Lions fan, after this game against Philly Sunday, and you're going on Twitter, you're talking to your friends or whatever it is, and your outlook on that game is, oh my, same old Lions. Dan Campbell's not going to work. This team sucks. Jared Goff's the worst. The defense is worse than last year. Aaron Glenn's an idiot. Same old, they'll never win with this ownership. That's the Lions. That's what they do. It's never going to get better. If that's your outlook after Sunday, you're a fucking loser. There's no other way to put it. That's a loser mentality. And you can do it if you'd like. I'm not going to stop you. Live your life. Whatever makes you happy. If being a loser is what makes you happy, then be the biggest fucking loser there ever was. I'll staple my thumb and index finger straight to your forehead if you'd like. I'd be happy to. You're a loser if that's the way you think. I'm sorry. That's just it. And you know what's crazy? Is you're right. The Lions are a miserable franchise. The Lions have been utter failures since my life began. The Lions haven't won a playoff game since 91. They've had this every single year where they just lose games. They get your hopes up and then they lose. Yes, that does. Outside of the three years in my lifetime, they've been to the playoffs. Yes, that is how it goes every year. But here's my question to you, because that's how everybody wants to justify it. All these people that have the same old Lions attitude that one game into year two of Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes are ready to call the whole thing a failure again and lump it up with the other 50 years of Lions football. Everybody with that disposition, the entire basis of it is, well, they they, they haven't won in the past and uh, they lost today, so, so they must be losers forever. They can't ever win. That's their whole thing. Oh, because the Lions historically have lost, even though it's these two guys' 17th game together? in which year one we knew was going to be garbage. We knew we were going to be arguably the worst team in the NFL. It's game one of year two where we have made improvements. The team is better. The team will and is already more competitive as they fucking showed against the Eagles Sunday. They lost by the Eagles last year, a worse version of the Eagles. They lost by them. They lost to them by 38 last year. They went in last night and they battled. They battled. Every time they got punched in the face, they got back up just like Dan Campbell said they fucking would. They kept answering the bell. Yeah, they lost by three. It sucks. Yeah, they probably had a chance to win that game if they don't have the drops, if they make that tackle on Miles Sander on the fourth down at the end, if they don't take a couple stupid penalties, if the defense tightens up a little bit earlier than halfway through the fourth quarter. Yeah, they probably had a chance to win, but they could have quit in the second quarter. They could have quit a thousand times in the third, and they never fucking did. They were in it till the end. Those games, people are like, that's the game the Lions have been losing forever. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Battling back, making a game out of it all the way to the end when you've got men punched in the face 10 different times throughout the game. The only time that's ever happened is when Matthew Stafford was pulling fourth quarter comebacks out of his ass. That's the only time we've ever been in a position like that where one team has led and kind of controlled the game all game. And then in the fourth quarter, here come the Detroit Lions. What's going to happen? Outside of Matthew Stafford being a magician, that shit has never happened in Detroit. What do you mean that's a game the Lions lose? The game the Lions lose is the one that happened last year. Is they get down a little bit early, a couple things don't go their way. Hurts and the offense are humming for Philly. And everybody goes, all right, fuck it. It's pretty much halftime. Let's just call this one at half. We stink. Let's lose. And they lose by 38. They lose by five fucking scores. That's the Lions. That's the same old Lions. That's what the Lions do. This team, that fight that they produced on Sunday, 
the effort, I know they lost. I know it's a win or lose league. I know me saying, oh, well, they battled and they fought hard and they didn't give up doesn't mean shit as far as them making the playoffs, as far as the win-loss. I get it. I know how it works. And I, I understand my brain's on, you know, synapses, electrical, neurons, they're all firing. It's all good. But what I am saying is it's not the same to call the effort this past Sunday the same as 50 years of Lions football. That's just disingenuous. That's people who like want the Lions to be the same old Lions mold. And that's why I have to call people out as losers. Because even though the Lions are the Lions, even though they've never won a playoff game in my lifetime, not since 1991, 31 years now, even though that's all true, those past 30, 40, 50, 60 years of failure don't have anything to do with the game that was played on Sunday. They don't have anything to do with the game that's going to be played this Sunday against Washington. They don't have shit to do with Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes as Detroit Lions. Nothing. I don't give a fuck how long it's been since the Lions have won a playoff game. I don't care how long you've been alive that they've been losing games. I don't care that your dad said, don't get your hopes up and bought you a same old Lions fucking banner for your bedroom when you were 13. I don't care. None of that has anything to do with this new regime, with the new culture that's been built and is still being built and this new team. Nothing. And for some reason, there's people out there that either A, can't understand that, although I find that hard to believe because it's a pretty simple subject to wrap your head around, or B, refuse to understand that. It's like people want the same old Lions prophecy to be fulfilled. I swear. And I think that's what fires me up about it so much. Like, I understand if you're someone who's going, eh, well, I don't know if they'll beat Washington this week. They haven't really done anything. And in my lifetime, the Lions haven't necessarily been the best. My hopes aren't up super high, but we'll see what happens. Okay, fair enough. I understand. If you're pessimistic, I get it. If you don't have your hopes up, I get it. Probably shouldn't have your hopes up. You're right. I understand that. But there's a difference between, oh, I don't really have my hopes up. We'll see what happens. And they're going to be bad. They're the same old line. They lost one game to a playoff team, a team that people are projecting to win the NFC. Yeah, no, they're fucking – It's that's the Lions for you. Same same losses I've been seeing for 40 years. If that It's never going to change. That's what the Lions do. They get your hopes up. They get it close, and then they lose. That's it. Always is that way. Dan Campbell's not going to be any different. If that's your mentality – don't tell me you're a pessimist. You're a loser. You have a loser mentality. You already, the Lions in your mind have lost every game they're going to play before it's even started. That's a loser fucking way not only to look at life, my friend. That's a loser way to look, I mean, at football. That's a loser way to look at life. Mix them up. You understand what I was trying to say, though. Would have sounded way better. Probably would have made a better social media clip had I not fucked that up. But I did. You understand what I'm saying. It's a loser way to look at life. Any fucking aspect. You go to work every day. Are you like, well, work was tough last week, so this week's going to suck. What? You go to dinner and you're like, ah, the food I had the other day was kind of bad. This meal's going to fucking blow. What? You go up to the girl. You didn't get too lucky at the bar last weekend. Here we go this Saturday. And before you even go to talk to her, you're telling yourself, uh, it didn't work last weekend. This isn't going to work. It never does. What? Do you see the pattern? Whether it's girls, your job, relationships, food, fucking any life experience, or watching a football team, that's all the same. You have a defeatist mentality before it's even begun. You're already out. You've chalked it up as a failure before it's even had a chance to prove itself successful. What is your problem? Like, I genuinely, I feel bad that there are people that live life that way. I really do. There's no way to live your life. Nobody, like, your friends or your family, whoever you think may enjoy spending time with you, I promise you, they don't. Nobody likes being around that shit, which is part of the reason why I can't understand it. Why do you want that to be your disposition? I understand, like I said, if you're a little pessimistic, I don't have the hopes up. Hopefully Dan Campbell proves it to me. I'm not buying the stock just yet. Okay, if you're a wait and see, yeah, 
That makes total sense. I'm I'm more of an optimist. I want to believe. I want it to work. I'm going to give them the support, roll, rally up the troops, get people fired up, and let's fucking ride. That's more my mentality. That's more my personality. But if, hey, if you are a pessimist by nature and you are more of a wait and see, I get that too. What I'll never understand is the people who after one game of year two are already going, it's never going to work. Same old Lions. That's what they do. They get it close and then they lose. Acting like we just lost to a team who's going to win four games this year. Acting like we had the 14-point fourth quarter lead and blew it and lost. We were the ones that made the comeback. That team we lost to is going to win at least 10, 11 games this year. We're the ones who battled back. We're the ones who made it interesting. Usually the Lions, usually we're on the flip side. We have the lead and it evaporates. And next thing you know, we lose on our last second field goal. I was at the Ravens game last year. That's the game they lost. It wasn't crawling back tooth and nail, fighting for every yard, never quitting. And then you fell a little short. It was, we had it. We're, we're coasting. Here come the Lions and you blow it and you lose. That's the Lions battling back 38 points and to bring it back. And the offense after that abysmal first half to fight and put up points and Jared Goff to lock back in and Ben Johnson to readjust and get the ball into DeAndre Swift's hands more and kind of figure out, all right, hey, you know what? I fucked up in the second quarter. We got away from the run. It cost us, probably cost us the game. Those three straight drives, the three straight three and outs, probably cost us the game. The defense, I'm sure, was gassed. You're not picking up a first down. You lose momentum. Obviously, you're not scoring points. That probably cost us the game. But to readjust in the second half and go, you know, when we give Swift the ball, he kind of fucks these dudes up a little bit. Maybe we should give him the ball again to make that adjustment, to improve, to get better. That's what you're looking for. Nobody in their right mind should be coming into this Lions season going, if we don't win every fucking game, we're the same old Lions. If we don't win every game this season, the Fords better sell the team. If we don't beat the Bills, the Eagles, the Packers twice, if we don't build all beat all these teams that should definitely be better than us this year, Dan Campbell's never going to work. If that's your mentality, you're a moron. Your head's in the wrong place. you got to re-educate yourself on what the Lions are going to be this year. You got to go look at the rebuild and see what the plan looks like. Year two, this year was never let's beat the best teams, win 13 games, go to the playoffs, win a playoff game, host another. That's no, 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 no. Somebody gave you that impression. No, that's not going to happen this year. This year is let's be better. Check at least through one game. Let's be competitive every game. Check. They lost that game by 38 last year to a worse team. That's not competitive. That's pathetic. They were competitive competitive this past Sunday. Check. Let's win a couple more games. And they're going to. If you think this team's only winning three, again, you don't know anything. I'm sorry. I hate to like be a dick about it and be like, you're an idiot. You suck. Just so super blatant like generalization. But I don't know how else to say it. If you watch that game against the Philadelphia Eagles Sunday and your takeaway is we still stink. We're only going to win three games. There's been no improvement. Same old lines. Dan Campbell's not going to work. I don't like you're just that you're an idiot. You're a loser. I don't know what else to tell you. I don't need people to go out there and be like, yeah, the Lions are back. Let's celebrate. We lost to the Eagles, Super Bowl bound. Dan Campbell, here we come. I don't need you to throw a fucking pep rally. I just need you to have a decent head on your shoulders and go, well, they didn't lose by over five touchdowns. So that's an improvement. When they could have laid down the 10 times and gotten curb stomped, they didn't. Jared Goff, although they're having a pretty bad first half, kind of figured it out, had a better second half. Good. The defense, even though they couldn't stop Jalen Hurts all day in the fourth quarter, when we needed to stop to have a chance, they got a couple. Pretty good. Like, there are things to be happy about. It doesn't always need to be doom and gloom, end of the world, sell the team, same old lines. Anytime something goes wrong for Detroit. Like, you would think that a fan base like Lions fans who have been through so much adversity – and have been faced with so much failure, you think the disposition would be a little bit more like, all right, bad shit is going to happen. Figure it out. Find your way through it. Make something good out of it. The Steelers nearly lost. The Bengals, they were in the Super Bowl last year. They lost. Rams in the Super Bowl, won the Super Bowl, lost. Green Bay lost badly to Minnesota. Three pretty successful franchises, all very successful teams last year. You think... Any three of those fan bases today are going, 
wow, same old Packers, fucking same bet back to the same Bengals. You think people in Cincinnati are doing that today? Stats, this is the Bengals, just like old times. This is what the Bengals do. They lose all the games. They can't win anything. That's the Bengals. You think that's what's happening in Cincinnati? I promise you it isn't. I fucking promise you it's not what's going on in Cincy. You think Rams fans are like, well, that's it. We're going to suck this year, dude. We got thrown around by the Bills. We stink. This sucks. And fucking McVay and Stafford are never going to get it done again. Do you think that's what's happening with Rams fans? No. So how come with Lions fans, it's immediate, this is never going to work. Immediate doom and gloom, apocalypse, end of the world. This franchise sucks. Why can't it be, we lost the game to a team who people think might go to the Super Bowl, is a lock for the playoffs. Team that beat us by 38 last year. We're not even supposed to be good this year. Like, our ceiling is maybe a 500 team, and we brought it back, we battled back, and lost by three. All right, you know what? That happens. We're not going to win any all of the games this year anyway. The Eagles, the Bills, and the two Packers games going into the season are the four where it's like, yeah, those are probably guaranteed L's. Minnesota is going to be tough. There are some other tough games. I mean, it's the NFL. Every game's tough. But those are the four teams where we're going in. It was like, yeah, probably like a 0% chance you win those games. Those are the four. We lost to one of those four by three, and we fucking battled. We gave them a hell of an effort. But the, the takeaway is this is terrible. It's the worst. I don't understand. I don't understand, and I don't understand pointing to the past as the reason for being such a hater because it's not pessimism. It's beyond. I swear to God there are people in the fan base that, like, want the Lions to be bad so they can say, I told you this is what the Lions do, so they can, like, be right, so they can do the whole same old Lions, these guys suck routine. I swear I don't understand. There's not a fan base in America, in the world, in any sport more starved for success than Detroit Lions fans. And half of those fucking fans parade around and act like it's cool that the Lions are bad. Are like fired up to tell you that it's the same old Lions when they lose a game. Are the first to say, I told you Dan Campbell was never going to work when they lose one game in a second year. It's the weirdest thing to me. It really is. That's your takeaway. It's same old Lions. Immediately. Week one of year two against a playoff team. And it's same old Lions. What? We got Eagles fans. Shout out Kehoe texted me going, the Lions looked way better. Like, I think you guys will actually win some games this year. Jalen Hurts going, yeah, that's definitely not the same team we played last year. What, dude? The opposing team quarterback is more complimentary and is more recognizing like, fuck, these guys are turning it around a little bit than the own fan base who's supposed to be behind it looking for the positives going, all right, you know, we lost, which sucks. But like, there's some positive, there's some good stuff happening. Dan Campbell, the culture seems to be building at least a little bit. No, Jalen Hurts is going to point that out before half of you. Half of you would rather go, I told you so, same old lion, we stink, we're never going to be good. I just don't, why are you a fan? Why do you watch the games? Why do you pay any attention? I I don't understand. People going, Nick, you haven't been alive, alive long enough. I'm 40 years old, you're only 25, like, give it 10 more years, you'll come around. No, I won't. I might move further away, actually. I don't want to ever come around to that line of thinking. What is talking about and thinking about and dwelling on 50 years of failure? How does that improve or help or do anything remotely positive for the 2022 Detroit Lions? How does after losing this game to Philly, how does going, they always lose these close games. That's what they've done my entire life. How, like, what about that is productive for this year, for moving forward? Like those people who do the whole SOL thing, but are still like, I'm a Lions fan. You just haven't been one long enough. So if you're a Lions fan, is it fair to assume that you want the Lions to actually win games at some point? Is that fair to assume? So what about being extremely negative and calling Dan Campbell a failure in his 18th game against the playoff team? What, like, how does that correlate to, but I hope they win some games. What? Because the me from where I sit and when I read these things and I hear these things, I read them and I go, this guy seems like he's almost like happy that the Lions lost so he can be right about the Lions being SOL. It's like this dude is 
excited to fucking tell you, Dan Campbell's not it. I told you so. Like, you should be upset. Even if you do truly believe that, that Dan Campbell isn't the answer, you should be upset to say it. You shouldn't be like, ha I told you so, man. That's what you get for believing in the Lions. Like, you should be upset. You should be sad. If you truly are a fan and you want to see them be successful, you should be upset that that's like your prerogative. I just don't get it. It drives me insane with Lions fans. Like, dude, the most frustrating part of the game Sunday is the fucking fan base's reaction. I don't even care about the game. The game was pretty good. Like, I walked away from the game. Bummer that we lost, but I was like, dude, that was, like, pretty encouraging. I thought so. I walked away Sunday kind of, like, with a smile on my face. Like, yeah, it sucks that we lost. I didn't think we were going to win. I don't think anybody did. But, dude, they did some stuff. Like, they impressed me. They did things I did not expect them to do. When they got down 24-14 in the second quarter, I was like, "Uh uh-oh. Right then, I was like, they're going to lose this game by a lot. I was like, fuck, we're, this is like 21 point L coming up here. The fact that that didn't happen alone, I'm like, that's all right. All right. I can work with that. That'll hold me over and tell the commanders on next Sunday. I, I can use that. I wasn't like, fuck, we still lost by three. Same old fucking Lions. No. Because if you watch games like that Ravens game last year and you watch the game against Philly this week, those are two way different games. Both games, they lost by three to a playoff team. Those are two way different games. And if you tell yourself they're the same, you're lying. Way different games. That Ravens game last year, that was the same old Lions loss. This Eagles game yesterday, that wasn't the same old Lions. That was a loss. Hurt, sucked, came up short. But that was an encouraging loss. That was a loss where it's like, all right, fucking beat the commanders next week. I think we will. I think we're, I think we're like better this year. And that's where we're at in the rebuild too. It's not about, it is about winning and losing, right? It is about winning as many games. But right now we know that that winning as many games isn't going to equate to 10, 11, 12 wins and playoff wins. Right now it's about, are we better? Like, is the team better? Is the offense better? Is the coaching staff better? Is the defense better? And I think the answer to all those is yes. So that's why when I see the negativity and the SOL shit, I'm like, dude, give it a rest. There are things to improve. Just because just because the game, you know, was good and they battled back doesn't mean – trying to pick something off the floor here, sorry. Doesn't mean everything was perfect. The defense wasn't good, needs to be way fucking better. Jared Goff, first half, not good, needs to be way fucking better. Play calling in that second quarter wasn't good, needs to be better. Dan Campbell needs to be a little bit better with the timeouts. Um, I don't hate the onside kick, to be honest. A lot of people are ripping on him for that. I didn't really hate it, and I'll explain that. But just because I'm, like, encouraged and I'm bashing on all these losers out there who are like, the Lions lost again, that's it, same old Lions, and the fucking loser mentality, just because I'm roasting those people doesn't mean, like, hey, the defense was awesome. It sucks that they lost, though. No, there's things to improve. I just can't deal – I can't do, like, the apocalypse mentality. I can't do it. It drives me insane. For being, like, a fan of the worst franchise in the world – you would think there'd be a little bit more of fortitude amongst the fans. You'd think there'd be a little bit more of, okay, it's this new coach. Everybody likes him. He seems to be doing it the right way. The players like him. The media likes him. The fans like him. All right. You know, like they, they did get better. They did like they black and white fandom bias aside. The lions did get better. They lost to a worse version of that team by 38 last year. They lost to a better version by three yesterday. That's factually, they got better. But instead of looking at the positives and saying, okay, sucks that we lost. There's things to improve on. But hey, this was good. That was good. It's just same old lines. This sucks. We'll never be good. What the fuck? I can't stand it. How is that the takeaway? All right, I'm done ripping the fan base apart. I just had to. I knew it was coming too. Like halfway through that game, I was sitting on my couch going, I'm going to have beef with Lions fans. I'm going to have fucking beef. And here we are. I just had to, I had to get it out of me. Let me take a quick break and we'll spend, I don't know, like 10, 15 minutes talking about the game itself. And then we'll do Michigan, Michigan State and uh, call it an episode. Quick break. I hear you. Jared Goff wasn't great. Defense was bad. Uh, Dan Campbell did a couple things where it's like, ah, Dan, ah. You're not even calling plays this year. Can't be fucking that up. No doubt. 
there are things that were bad that need to be improved on. 100%. This team, again, let me reiterate for the last time, this team isn't a finished product. This isn't like the zenith of the Dan Campbell, Brad Holmes picture, right? This isn't what they imagined when they started over. There's another year or two left until it gets to that point where they're like, this, this is what, this was the plan all along. So Jared Goff being bad, like as much as they do get behind Goff, which is good. What are they going to do? Say, nah, Goff stinks, but he's who we got. Of course not. <laughs> That'd be fucking insane. They get behind Jared Goff, right? They're with Aaron Glenn, who I still like. They were more aggressive, which I think was good. Jalen Hurts just kind of toasted them with his legs. There are still things to be improved. I get it. Golf was bad. His first half was fucking not good, dude. Just missing so many open receivers. I think that's what kills me more with him, to be honest. Like that pick six, tough, bad throw. The defender tipped it right into the other guy's arms, ends up in your own end zone. Like fucking hurts difference in the game, really, right? Um, had that not happened, who knows if the Lions win or whatever anyways. But what I think bothers me more so than just that one play is the multiple, multiple times he was just off where a guy's open and it's a bad throw. And it's like, Jared, like, I don't like that DJ chart throw he made at the end, the touchdown. Like, I don't even need you to make that throw Goff. It was sick that he did. That play was unreal. Sick throw, sick catch. If they can do that consistently, that takes the offense to another level. But like, that's the thing, dude. That throw, I don't need you to make that throw to Chark. I don't need you to throw a 25-yard dot right over his shoulder in the bread basket where only he can catch it. I don't need that throw. Jared, what I do need is when Craig Reynolds – or not Craig Reynolds. I keep calling him that. What's his first name? The, the uh, wideout, number eight. Is it Jeff Reynolds? Either way, whenever he's wide open, it's a 15-yard corner route, and he's wide. There's nobody around him. I need you to put it on him. I need you to throw it where he can catch it. When it's Amon Ra, who's five-yard drag, and there's nobody in front of him, I need you to throw the ball in front of him. It can't be behind him, right? When it's Hawkinson on an eight-yard curl for a first down, I need that throw to be on the on the numbers. I don't need it to be at his kneecap. I need that throw to be an easy catch. Like That's what bothers me, dude. I'm not going to ever come on here and go, yeah, golf missed that 45-yard fade where he had to put it in the perfect spot for Chark to catch it, but he missed it a little bit. I'm never going to come in and complain about that. Even a 10-yard, 12-yard, 20-yard, 50-yard, like I'm never going to be like, damn, golf missed that throw where, yeah, it had to be in a shoebox to make the play, but like he missed it. Fuck. I'm never going to complain about that. I am going to complain where our guy's wide open and you throw it four yards off. I'm going to complain when the guy's wide open and it's probably six points and you throw it three feet too high. Like when it's a clean pocket and the receiver's wide open and you're missing those throws, that's where I have the issue. And similarly, Peyton Thorne, who we'll talk about a little bit later in the episode, same deal with MSU this week. Like I can live with you not making every deep ball. I can live with you not making the right read every single time. When you make the right read and your wide receivers open, you, you have to like, you have to put it where he can catch it. Plain and simple. Making the throw is the easiest part about being the quarterback. The hard part is figuring out who's going to be open, recognizing that they are in fact open, and then deciding, all right, I'm going to throw it. That's the hard part. The easy part is 20 yard out route, dude. I do this shit in my sleep. So when it's there and you've made the read and you're able to pick up that first down on third and eight, the, the throw has to be there. And it wasn't all of Goff's fault that the offense struggled a little bit in the first half. It wasn't totally his fault that the passing game wasn't quite where it needs to be. There were like four or five drops where, again, that's how you lose. You drop the ball four or five times against a playoff team like Philly. That's the difference between winning and losing. So many people want to point to one thing. In this game, they want to point to Dan Campbell going onside. They want to point to Goff throwing the pick six. They want to point to Goff missing receivers. They want to point to the defense being bad and Hurts getting out of contain every single fucking third down. All of those contributed. But guess what? I mean, the Goff missed throws, that's unforced. Dan Campbell's making an effort to win the game. He has balls. He's trying to do something. I respect it. The defense, at least, you know, Jalen Hurts is a good player. A.J. Brown's a good player. Shit happens. The drops, 
the drops, like you're a professional wide receiver. All you do is catch the ball. The drops, those are the difference between winning and losing. I mean, it's all a difference, but the drops, like you can't have those. If it's Jalen Hurts torching you, yeah, the defense could be better. Sure, the pass rush could be better. Okay, the strategy, the scheme, the contain, it could all be better. Jalen Hurts is a good athlete. He's really good at scrambling. A.J. Brown's a fucking freak. He's hard to cover. He's going to get open. Like, that shit's going to happen. Jared Goff, you know he's not a primetime QB. He's going to throw interceptions. He's going to take sacks. It happens. Dan Campbell, he's ballsy. He wants to play to win. He doesn't want the game to come to him. He wants to go out and take it. It's going to work. They went for it on fourth down. DeAndre Swift scored a touchdown. He went for the onside kick. It didn't work. It's going to work sometimes. Other times it won't. At least he's trying. He's trying to make shit happen. The drops, like, dude, we don't have that in the budget. You know what I'm saying? If we're playing the worst teams in the league, the Chicago Bears, there might be a little room for that in the budget. When you're playing a playoff team like Philly, you're playing the Bills on Thanksgiving, you're playing Green Bay at Lambeau, dog, you don't have the ability to drop four or five passes. You don't have the ability to drop crucial third down conversions. You don't have the ability to drop a uh, corner out in the fourth quarter that if you catch, you're probably getting in the end zone and taking the lead with like a minute left. You probably don't have that affordability. You're just not good enough, right? The rest of your team, you don't make enough plays throughout the game to allow yourself to fuck up without anybody else causing you to fuck up four or five times. It just isn't there. So there, there's so many things, like so many things people want to point the finger at. This game really was, I think Goff said it afterwards, like this game really was the reason they lost is just a culmination of shooting themselves in the foot. Missed throws, missed tackles, especially that fourth and one. Um, the interception, dropped the balls. Defensive scheme, like not adjusting to hurt scrambling quick enough, not adjusting to hurt scrambling well enough. Um, the onside kick here or there, the clock management, like a bunch of things. The onside kick, so let me, let me just finish on Goff. So Goff, I understand Goff's not the guy forever. I still think he was okay. First half was not good. Second half, he started making some throws, started picking up some first downs and pushing it downfield successfully. I thought he was better. He need like, if he hits, he's going to throw interceptions. Like, he's Jared Goff. He's going to throw interceptions. He's probably going to throw more pick sixes. He's Jared Goff is what it is. He's going to take sacks. He's not going to make many plays with his feet is what it is. If he can make throws like he did in the second half, and clean up the first half mistakes where guys are open and it's just shit throws. Like, dude, Jared, all we need you to do is fake the run, and then when someone's open, put it on them. Doesn't need to be a tight, perfect spiral, 40 yards on the run, on the money, Aaron Rodgers shit. No, it needs to be he was running a 12-yard dig and he's open. Put it there. Don't put it down here. Don't put it at his shoelace. Don't put it a foot over him. Put it on the numbers. That's it. And I think if Goff can do that, the way our run game looked, the offense should be good, and that was encouraging. Swift may be the best player on the offense, maybe on the team. Um, he was money. Every single time he had the ball, it felt like he made shit happen. The offensive line, despite Big V being out, despite Ragnow playing a little hobbled, the offensive line was moving guys. The pass pro was a little shaky. Like, Jared, they got after Jared a little bit. It felt like the first quarter, the Lions controlled the scrimmage line of scrimmage pretty well, especially that first drive. I mean – that first drive, you couldn't ask for anything better. And then the second quarter, we kind of got away from the run and the pass pro wasn't so great. And the Eagles, who have a great defensive line, great front seven, started to get after us a little bit. And they were being aggressive, credit to them. They were forcing us, you know, they were going, we're going to rush six. Jared Goff better be good enough to make a play. And he wasn't a lot of the time, so credit to them for that. The third quarter, we started to get it back a little bit where it was like, all right, you know, we're successful when we run the ball. Throwing the ball is easier when we run the ball. DeAndre Swift has been the best player. When we run the ball, he gets to do stuff. Like, we started to figure out our strengths more, it felt like. I don't know why we got away from the run so much in that second quarter. I don't know if it's because right away it was like, shit, Hurts and the Eagles are going to be tough to stop. And Ben Johnson kind of got in his own head and pressured himself to, like, be more dynamic. I don't know if that was the case. I'm not certain. But when we ran the ball, the offense was pretty effective. The offense moved pretty well. We put up 35 fucking points, right? So there are positives from the offense. Goff, I believe, will be better. I think he'll be closer to what he was in the second half. 
Maybe there were some nerves. Maybe, again, same deal as Ben Johnson. He was trying to force the issue a little bit. I don't know. But I think the offense will be okay. I think they showed some good things. The offensive line was solid. Um, DeAndre Swift was solid. I liked what Ben Johnson did outside of getting away from the run in the second quarter. There were some good things. Can't have the pick six. Can't miss wide open receivers, right? Can't totally abandon the run in the second quarter of a game that's like a 10-point game. There are some things to clean up, but hey, there's there's 16 more games. I have faith that they'll be able to clean those things up. I do. As far as the defense goes, not a great showing. I didn't know Jalen Hurts was that fucking good, to be honest. I didn't know Jalen Hurts had legs like that. Well, I mean, I knew he was athletic, but I didn't know Jalen Hurts and the Eagles offense was catered to his legs that much. Like, I didn't know they just ran a read option offense um, every single time it felt like second down, third down, when it was a clear passing down and he dropped back and anybody, Hutchinson got close to him, Charles Harris, anyone, we send a blitz, people get close. He just scampered out of there to daylight like every single time it felt like. And I don't know if it was people abandoning their gaps on the rush. I don't know if it was just great blocking by Philly, picking everybody up and Jalen Hurts making plays. I don't know if it was over pursuit. We saw a couple times where guys were in the backfield and Hurts kind of just stepped one way or another and they went flying past them and he had 15 yards of open field. Not every quarterback we play is going to be a scrambling quarterback. Not every quarterback we play is going to have the offensive line that Jalen Hurts does, one of the better, if not the best, in the NFL. Not every offense we play is going to have Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown. Mind you, Devontae Smith got locked down by Jeff Okuda, another positive that nobody wants to fucking talk about. Philly's good. Like, at the end of the day, you can say the defense sucked, the game plan sucked, the scheme sucked, Aaron Glenn never adjusted, we never ran contain, it took too long, why did it take till the fourth quarter? You can say all that for sure, and a lot of it's warranted. Like, we did play way too much man coverage. After the first quarter where it was evident every time we play man, Jalen Hurts is going to run it for 10 yards, we should have not played man again. Right. We didn't start spying until late in the game, like the third, fourth quarter. Um, and it started to work. Right. We started to go, hey, we're going to rush four, maybe five, play his own. Jalen Hurts, if you want to throw it, fucking beat us that way. It took us way too long to get to that. Cause when AJ Brown was torching us too, it was like AJ Brown was just going up against man. I don't want to cover AJ Brown with man. Like, let's layer that motherfucker. Let's make Jalen Hurts pick apart his own. Cause I don't have faith in him doing that. I have faith in him taking off for 15 yards when everybody's back is to him and there's a little bit of daylight. I have faith in him pulling for a read option every single time. Like, I have faith in him making us pay with his legs. I don't like I'm not sitting here going, Yeah, you won't run it, Jalen. I'm sitting here going, you won't sit in the pocket and throw it. And he did a few times, but AJ Brown and man coverage. Like, you're kind of asking to get beat, right? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that he's one-on-one -on -one and go, my guy's better than his. I'm going to just throw it to him. And I, even then, you know what's funny? Even then, I thought the secondary was okay. I thought they made a couple plays. Yeah, they still got roasted a little bit. But I thought they made some plays as well. Like, it wasn't all Philly through the air. The run game, that's on the defensive line. That's on the linebacking core, which Anzalone, God bless him. I like we need more. We need more. Rodriguez was great to see him in there. I mean, he's a sixth round pick. He's a rookie. What can you expect from him? The linebacking situation needs to be resolved before next season. Has to be like number one priority on the defense. Linebackers need to do something about him. Okuda was awesome. I thought AO made some plays like AJ Brown's no small feat, especially AJ Brown when his quarterback is taken off every other play for 10 yards. Like that shit gets complicated. You know what I'm saying? And people want to rip on Hutch. He's the second overall pick. Jalen Hurts is roasting us on the ground. Where's the pass rush? Where are the sacks? It felt like the entire first half, our defensive line, we were sending blitzes. We were causing havoc. We were getting in his face. We were getting near Jalen Hurts. And every single time someone got close to him, he took off the other way and picked up 10 yards because we were in man. It felt like we were pressing the issue of let's fucking go get this guy. Let's make it happen, which I love. Anybody who's listened long enough has heard me talk about Matt Patricia and how his defenses drove me nuts because quarterbacks Mitch Trubisky would sit back there with nobody in his face every game and roast us for 400 yards. And yet the very next game, we would never think, hey, how about we blitz for once in our fucking lives? How about we try and get a little pressure on the QB for once? Because not getting pressure never works. So I can appreciate that Glenn 
was aggressive. He sent blitzes. He wanted to get after Hurts. He wanted to make Hurts make decisions, much like Philly made Jared make decisions. I can appreciate that. When you have someone as athletic as Hurts and someone, I'm sure the mindset of Hurts, were like, he sees a blitz coming. His first thought is, where can I run? Not who do I throw? It's how do I get out of here? It's not where, who's the hot route. It's where the fuck, where's an opening? I'm going to run. It's tough. Containing a rushing quarterback, hardest part of coaching that defense. They've done it well, right? They've done it well against Arizona. They've done it well against Kyler. They did it well against Lamar last year. Not sure why the scheme didn't translate exactly to Philly. Again, we've said the offensive line for Philly is really fucking good, one of the best. Um, their run game was churning. Those read options were killer. A.J. Brown's a dog. Like, Philly's just a really good team. So I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, this defense, same shit as last year. Aaron Glenn didn't change anything. Nothing improved on that side of the ball. After one game against a really good team, I'm not going to do that. It was a little disappointing to see again, like, fuck, the defense is just a glaring weakness. Like, that sucks. The defense is why we lost a lot of games last year, and we're just right back to 38 points in week one when you've had all offseason to game plan for the rushing tech, for Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown. Like, I can see the disappointment there. But that all said, I'm not prepared to go, yep, it's a failure. Aaron Glenn doesn't know what he's doing. I'm not prepared to go, Aiden Hutchinson, he was a bust. Where was he all game? Aiden Hutchinson will get there. He was in there. Jalen Hurts going against a great offensive line and trying to get after a super athletic scrambling quarterback. It's a tall fucking order, dude. Like they, I have faith, again, that the next time we play a rushing quarterback, they will make adjustments. When we play the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen, our defensive scheme will look different than it did against Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles. Next week, we get to play Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz is not Jalen Hurts. The Washington Commanders are not the Philadelphia Eagles. If we come out next week and Carson Wentz torches us with his legs or through the air or whatever, then I'll be a little nervous. Then I'll be a little upset. If that's the case, then we can talk. Do I think that's going to happen? Absolutely not. I think Aiden Hutchinson will show up next week. You'll be able to read the box score and see his name a few different times. I think this defense makes itself known a little bit more next week. I think we run the ball a little bit more. I think we win next week pretty handily. And you know what's crazy? It's week two only. I think next week is a little bit of a must win. And it's not must win like, Oh, you know, if you lose week two, if you start off 0-2, you're done. You're out of the playoffs. There's no chance. You know, it's not great, but I don't think that's necessarily true. I think it's must win just as far as the fact Philly is way better than Washington. Okay. You battled back. You played them hard. You played them close. We have half the fan base, like, ready to give up already. You have to play again at home. Ford Field is going to be buzzing. They know, we know, everybody knows Carson Wentz and the Washington Commanders are not Philly and Jalen Hurts. Carson Wentz, eh, doesn't scare me. Like, we should terrorize Washington next week. Carson Wentz should have a shit day at Ford Field. He shouldn't be able to hear. He won't scramble anywhere near the level of Jalen Hurts. He won't throw the ball like Jalen Hurts. I love McLaurin. They got Jahan Dotson, good players. They aren't Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown. We should have our way with Washington next week. We ran the ball on Philly. We should run the ball down Washington's fucking throats, right? We couldn't get off the field until the fourth quarter as a defense. We should get off the field pretty regularly as a defense against Washington. I think it's a must win. Yeah, if we want to have any shot at winning nine games and maybe somehow clinching a playoff spot, then probably, yeah. But I think Washington's a must win just for the sake of the fan base, just for the sake of rallying the troops. Washington's not a good team. Washington's not a good team. Washington is a team that if what we just did against Philly is true, if that improvement is real and this team is better, we should beat Washington. That's how I feel. I think the defense will be better. I think the offense will be better. Even though the offense, 35 points, pretty fucking good. There is still... There was still so much for them to clean up. I think every aspect of the game will be better. And I think we beat Washington pretty soundly, like 31-17, something like that. I think we handle Washington pretty easily next week and kind of reel in people a little bit like, all right, like relax. We we can, you know, we're going to beat some teams. If you're a good team, if you're a playoff team, all right, we'll see what we got. But if you're bad, if you're an av, you're, you're mediocre, we'll, we'll, you know, we're going to take it to you a little bit.
we're going to beat you, right? Or at least we should. So I think that's how I, that's kind of my mentality going into Washington next week. And we'll do another pod uh, before next weekend. The last thing I want to say is people upset with Dan Campbell with the onside in the third. All right. At the moment, we scored to bring it from a 17-point game to a 10-point game. I understand, obviously, in hindsight, you know, you didn't get it. They went down and scored. It makes it like fucking hindsight's 2020. In the moment, though, we couldn't stop Jalen Hurts to save our lives. One. Two. Every single time they got the ball, if they're going down the field, they're just burning clock. Time was our most precious asset. So if you kick it onside, obviously the one outcome is you get the ball back, you go down and score again. That's ideal. If you don't get the ball back, though, there's the trade-off that they start at like the 50-yard line. They get one, two first downs. They're at least getting a field goal. But I understand Dan Campbell's line of thinking. If they recover it at the 50, Listen, you haven't stopped them for shit all day anyway. They went down and scored. You haven't stopped them anyway. At least now if they're scoring, they're wasting far less time. You probably save two, three minutes. You're either going to stop them in the first one or two set of downs and force – you're either going to stop them and force a field goal, which at that point, 10 points, 13 points, not a huge deal, or they're going to go down and score and you're going to save like two, three minutes. I understand it. I understand the logic. Was it the right decision? I don't know. I appreciate him being ballsy. I appreciate him trying to go and make shit happen, playing the win instead of not to lose. Hindsight 2020, they recovered. They scored easily. Oh, you shouldn't have done it. I got it at the time. Save a little bit of time, shorten up the field. Listen, if they got that ball at their own 20 or 50 or the 50-yard line, Philly was probably scoring either way. The way the game was going, every time they touched the ball, they got in the end zone. So you know what? If they're going to get in the end zone regardless, let's save two or three minutes so maybe we still have a chance. And it kind of worked. We ended up having a little bit of time. We ended up scoring later in the fourth and having some time and kind of making it interesting. If that ball goes down to Philly's 20-yard line and they burn off another two or three minutes, maybe it's a 10-point loss instead of three. Maybe we never end up getting that close. So everybody calling for Dan Campbell's head for the onside, think about it that way. Like it's you don't obviously it's great if you do recover it, but if you don't, you save a little bit of time. They're probably scoring anyway. Makes a little bit of sense. Um, that's all I got on the game, though. That's all I got. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. It was a good game. They fought hard. They lost, is what it is. I'm excited for next week. And that's all you can be. Keep me in it every week. I'm excited to watch the Lions play again against Washington. I think they'll beat them. I think they should beat them. So we'll see what happens. We're going to do another, we'll talk more, you know, later in the week, but uh, that's all I got on the lines. Let me take a quick break right now. And then we will do MSU U of M recap, maybe like 15 minutes, something short. And then we'll do another episode later this week, either Thursday or Friday, looking forward to the Washington game. Look at both for Michigan state and the Lions, And then looking forward to Michigan <laughs> fucking Yukon, bro. Who cares? Quick break. All right, Michigan State fucking smokes Akron. Uh, U of M kills Hawaii. What else is new, right? That kind of went the way you expected it to. The two big storylines for each team in each game, I think, is the quarterback play. We'll start with MSU. MSU guy, they're on the tip of my tongue. First off, I thought the team looked pretty good, right? The defense, I thought, looked good. That first QB that Akron had was kind of nice with it. He was making me a little nervous, doing a little bit of what Jalen Hurts did to the Lions, running, like, RPO, quick passing shit. Kind of gave us some trouble. Kendall Brooks, like a bat out of hell, forcing that first fumble. Cal Halliday. There's a couple things. I think the defense is much better than last year. First off, people want to say haters. Haters want to say, oh, you're lucky. Like they kept moving the ball. Western and then Akron. They were moving the ball. You're lucky you forced these turnovers. It wasn't for a fumble. Dude, forcing turnovers is part of playing defense good defenses force turnovers good teams force turnovers it's so much easier to win football games if you get the ball an extra three times a game that's just a fact like what do you mean oh you're so lucky they fumbled what if get this hear me out what if every day in practice msu's defense harped on taking away the ball what if they harped on forcing fumbles put your helmet on the ball when someone stood up come in and rip that thing out when he's falling to the ground punch at that thing what if they made it a point of emphasis every single day in practice to force fumbles is it lucky that everybody fumbles or is msu just super disciplined and super locked in on forcing those fumbles 
Just something to think about. People love to say that, oh, you're so lucky they fumbled. Is it a coincidence that we forced however many of them in two games? Is it a coincidence that Jacoby Winman has forced, I think, four fumbles in two games? Is he? Is it just like lucky that every time he's around the guy, they just drop the fucking ball? Or does Jacoby Winman get to a player with the ball and go, I'm going to rip the football out of his hands. I'm going to punch at the football as hard as I physically can, and hopefully he drops it. Maybe, just maybe, our players, when they, after Akron's guy has a 15-yard reception, maybe our players are like, all right, well, let's force a fumble. Jerry Judy, that's my fantasy team. Jerry fucking Judy. I knew he was going to be a steal. Russell Wilson throwing to Jerry Judy. I knew he was going to be a steal. Sorry. Let's go. Let's go, Jerry Judy. Hey, Broncos country. Let's ride. Jerry fucking Judy. Anyways. I like the defense. I think the defense is much better than last year for a couple of reasons. The turnovers we just mentioned, the pass rush in general, way better. Jacoby Winman might be the best pass rusher in the Big Ten. Um, he's the best pass rusher we've had since Mel Tucker got here, and it's not close. He might be one of the best pass rushers in America, to be honest. I think he's leading the country with five and a half sacks through two games. Like, bro, think about that for a second. We have a guy on our team, and I know it's Western and it's Akron. We have a guy on our team who has five and a half sacks in two games and four forced fumbles. That didn't happen last year. That did not happen last year. We didn't have a guy like that last year. And as much as you want to say about the secondary and the pass defense, those guys get way better when you have a defensive end who's in the backfield causing shit to happen all the fucking time. Stripping the QB, getting in his face, making him feel pressure. That makes a secondary better because now – Balls come out late. Balls come out a little inaccurate. He gets a little nervous, makes the wrong read. Everybody gets better when you have a pass rush. It's a fact. Jacoby Winman alone. Forget everybody else. Aaron Brule has been a huge improvement both in the pass rush and at the linebacker position. Cal Halliday still a savage. Amir Speed, I think, was a bit of an upgrade. I know we lost Xavier Henderson, and it sucks. Kendall Brooks was awesome. Saturday. Kendall Brooks was lighting people the fuck up. And yeah, people were still making some catches. But dude, people, they made a catch and half a second later, Kendall Brooks' shoulder pad was going into their gut. Like he was great, I thought. I thought you couldn't ask for more. After losing a fourth or fifth year guy, whatever Xavier is, leader of this team, captain of this team, Kendall Brooks steps right in and is just laying fucking hammer to people. You couldn't ask for more. I think the pass defense has been a little bit better. Chuck Brantley has been awesome. Should have had an interception. Don't really understand how they overturned it. I watched the replay like five times. And I was like, did he not? Like, he just had the ball in his hand and then he fell to the ground. What about that? What about that had the ball loose? Like, didn't didn't really understand that. Um, Jacob Slate, I think he got hurt, which sucks. Hope he's okay. But him and Simeon Barrow have been much better. Like every facet, the front four is better. The linebackers are better. The secondaries are better. And I I don't think they're, you know, 2013 Michigan State where it's nobody can even – you can't even pick up a fucking first down on these guys. It's not that level, like top 10 in the country level defense. But this defense, they were what, 120th or something last year? This defense will be like 60th, 70th. Like this will be at least – middle of the pack defense. And if for nothing else, it's for that pass rush. Having a guy like Jacoby Winman, he changes teams. Those guys, those dudes that you can rush for. And it's like, we might be rushing for, but one of those four is a bona fide stud at getting into the quarterback. He's going to hit a ghost move. That QB has got about two seconds to throw the ball. And if he doesn't, he's getting hit in the fucking back plate, whether he likes it or not, that changes the defense. And I think MSU has gotten there. Offensively, I think the run game was better against Akron. I think the offensive line was better against Akron. Um, the offense in general was better against Akron. It felt smoother. It wasn't as, I don't know, Western, it just felt like a little clunky, like not super fluid, but it felt much better against Akron. Jalen Berger's great. I love Jarek Broussard. I love Jarek Broussard. I think he should be getting the lion's share of the carries, to be honest. He's fucking quick. His vision's unreal. He's not hesitant. He makes one cut, and he's gone. He's fast. He lowers his shoulder and finishes runs forward. I love Jarek Broussard. I love him. Jalen Berger's great. I like the whole, like, thunder and lightning Jer Jalen Berger, more of the short yardage power back guy. And listen, Jalen Berger can make shit happen, too. Like, he'll hit a cutback. He's good at finding holes and making big plays. 
Broussard, I think, is just he's what he reminds me of Blake Corum a lot. Just super shifty, never gets tackled by the first man. And for his size and being so shifty, is strong. Like we'll run through tackles, we'll finish landing forward for another yard or two. I love Broussard. I I need him to play more. And I think he played more this week compared to the Western game. More though, dude. More fucking like he's a guy. The Lions with Swift, Broussard, like feed him, dude. Throw him screen passes. Get him isolated on a linebacker. Just put the ball in his hands any way you can. Like he is a good fucking football player. Wide receivers looked good. Jaden Reed got injured too, dude. The injuries. The injuries for State have been not great. Xavier Henderson, Darius Snow, Jacob Slade, now Jaden Reed. I really hope he's okay. Like, really hope he's okay. Like, that guy is part of the reason I think State would be good again this year is just having him. The fact that he can go one-on-one with anybody and get open. Please be okay, Jaden Reed. Um, The wide receivers were good, though. Trey Mosley. Keon, Jaden, um, Jeremy. I like the wide receivers a lot. We all know that though, right? Like the wide receivers are maybe the strength of the team. We all know that. The one downside, the one negative takeaway from the game this weekend, Peyton Thorne, man. Like, like what's good, Peyton? You know what I'm saying? What, what's, what's the deal, buddy? What's the deal, pal? A lot of the reason I thought we'd be good this year, too. I thought Peyton would at least be Peyton of last year. I thought he would improve, obviously. I thought he'd be at least what he did last year. I mean, it's like the Jared Goff thing. He's just missing guys that are open through a horrible interception. And interceptions are going to happen. It's part of playing quarterback. But he's missing guys that are wide open. Keon Coleman's wide open, and he's throwing it three feet over his head. Jaden Reed's wide open and he's overthrowing him by five yards. Running backs in the flats, wide open. He's throwing it at their feet like, Peyton Thorne, buddy, what's up? He's hesitant. Doesn't look like he's confident in where he's going with it. And when he does, the throws are off. Like guys that could be getting yardage after the catch can't. Or, you know, a, a, a curl route that would be a first. Now it's a punt. Like, Peyton Thorne is making me nervous. He's making me nervous. I'll I'll say it. And I don't want to get, you know, negative Nancy DEFCON mode right away. They're 2 and 0, right? They put up points. You you can beat Akron, you can beat Western Michigan, missing easy throws. You play Washington on the road, Ohio State in a couple of weeks, Wisconsin, Michigan, your quarterback can't just airmail it over wide open receivers especially when a crucial part of not only this offensive success, but the team success is getting the football to your wide receivers. You you can't miss guys when they're wide open. And I don't know what happened. I don't know what's up with Peyton because he was bad against Western too. He missed throws against them too. And again against Akron. And then Noah Kim comes in for one play evades the rush, rolls to his left on the run, and he throws a dime to Trey Mosley in the end zone. Like a dime right on the fucking money. A laser beam dime to Trey Mosley. It feels a little bit rash, a little bit of a reaction to go, I don't know if we look away from Peyton Thorne. He's going to start against Washington this week. First half is an evaluation. Michigan just did it, dude. They just won the Big Ten. They just beat Ohio State, and they're going to make a quarterback change. The first half against Washington this weekend, listen, if he's not playing well, it's going to be obvious because we won't have points. We might be in some hot water. If he doesn't play well this first half against Washington, interception, he's just missing guys that are open, bad reads. At halftime, if you're Mel Tucker, I know he's the most senior quarterback you have. I know he was the starter last year. He's a leader. He's a captain, him and Jaden Reed. I know. If he doesn't play well this first half against Washington, you might have to look at Noah Kim. You might have to try and make a change because forget the Washington game. Forget all these regular season games. If you want to be the big boy, if you want to beat Ohio State, you want to beat Michigan, you're not going to get by with C-plus quarterback play. You just won't. Part of the reason, yeah, K-9 was awesome last year against Michigan. Peyton Thorne was awesome against Michigan last year too. How many clutch fucking throws did he make? 
He's not making those throws right now. So you know what? Maybe it'll get it done against Washington. Maybe you skate by in Seattle. You're still going to have to figure something out if you want to win big. You want 10, 11 wins. You want to beat Ohio State. You want a Big Ten championship. The way Peyton Thorne's played so far ain't going to fucking cut it. And I don't want to hate on him, and I don't want to go, you get rid of him, this guy stinks. I'm not doing that. I have faith in him. I'm Start him against Washington. Let's see how the first first half goes. But, like, you can't – You're there's no way you're a Michigan State fan right now and you've watched him these first two weeks and you're going, Peyton looks great. Just not – no, just not true. He hasn't looked great. He's looked the opposite. Need to figure it out. Um, Michigan, they killed Hawaii. J.J. McCarthy is going to be the quarterback at the University of Michigan moving forward. The crazy thing, for a couple things. First off, how the fuck did Michigan host Hawaii? How the hell did they make them fly eight hours just to get their asses kicked? Like, that is so disrespectful. Hawaiians, native Hawaiians are all upset about the tourism industry. They hate people coming there and drinking their water and using their land and all that shit. You should be upset that your university football team just was forced to travel eight hours to Ann Arbor to get embarrassed in front of 100,000 people. Like, that is breaks some sort of civil rights code. It has to. That's just, I mean, Hawaiians are like friendly, aloha, harmony people, and you're going to bring them eight hours on a plane to get their asses kicked by Michigan. Oh, some things aren't fair, right? Some things aren't fair. Poor bastards got killed. Everybody knew it was coming. Um, they're bad. Hawaii's bad at football. Their team is bad. The biggest takeaway from this game, again, Michigan's defense looked good. Michigan's offense looked good. The run game looks nuts. The wide receivers look good. Michigan and Michigan State, pretty much the same game. Defense looks great. Offense looks great. Eh, well, you're playing a fucking Division Seven team, so makes sense. The craziest thing about this game, to me, as an MSU fan, how was Cade McNamara starting this year at all? How was Cade McNamara starting last year? Like, unless JJ didn't know the playbook or what, I, like, this training camp, how was it ever a question? How was it ever a battle? J.J. McCarthy and this offense look miles ahead of what Cade did last week against Colorado State. Like, it's not even the same team with J.J. in there. How the hell was there ever a quarterback competition? I'm supposed to believe Jim Harbaugh is this genius. He's this ultimate quarterback guru. But J.J. McCarthy and Cade McNamara, he was having a hard time distinguishing who looked better with the ones. I turned on the game recap for 30 seconds and I was like, oh shit. Oh shit, dude. They're good. JJ's good. This offense is good now. Oh no. They're Cornelius Johnson, AJ Henning, Blake Corum. Like they're going to be able to unlock their full potential now. That's not good. That's not good. We got to play them on Halloween or the day before. That's not, I wish. Can Cade come back? What about the seniority? He's a leader. Should Like let's play Cade. Yeah. Let's bring Cade back. How the fuck? Did Jim Harbaugh ever question whether or not J.J. should be the starter? They looked unbelievable. They looked unbelievable with J.J. J.J. looked comfortable. It looked easy. That's the best way to put it. Offense looked easy. Quarterback looked easy for J.J. McCarthy. The opposite of Peyton Thorne. Anybody that was open, he put it on him. Deep ball, short ball, doesn't fucking matter. He was throwing bombs right in the bread basket. He wasn't afraid to push the ball. When it came time to tuck and run, he was ready to go, and he got on his horse, dude. He's an athlete. He reminds me of Trevor Lawrence. He's got the cannon. Everybody knows he can throw it, and then he runs, and it's like, oh, shit, this guy's this guy's fucking fast. And he's big. I don't know how strong he is. I'd like to see him get sawed in half eventually, and he will. If he keeps running it, he's going to take a fucking lick one of these days. But he makes me nervous. That offense looked – so much better with J.J. McCarthy. I don't understand how it was ever a competition. Feel bad for Cade, right? You win it out. You win a, against Ohio State. You win the Big Ten, and you get your job taken. That's your reward. Congrats, buddy. Like that fucking sucks. No two ways around it. That sucks. Tough spot. Um, J.J. McCarthy's the better player, though. Like they're uh, it's their offense. Like when he throws the ball, dude. I was watching. Like damn. 
just looks nice when he throws it. Like it just looks like that guy's a that guy's a quarterback. When he throws that dude's a fucking quarterback, man. When he throws it, the ball goes the way it's supposed to. It looks how it's supposed to. Yes. That guy's a QB, man. That guy, yeah, dude. Like, it just felt right. It looked right. Everybody looked better. The wide receivers ate. Blake Corum was eating. Donovan Edwards was eating. Donovan Edwards, by the way, made an unreal catch down by the end zone. Michigan's going to be good. Michigan is good. I mean, obviously. I know they've only played cupcakes, and that's what state fans. It's funny. I was on Twitter earlier, and everybody's hyping up JJ, which if you're a Michigan fan, you should. He looked unbelievable. But it's funny. And it's as a Michigan fan, this is something you've never been able to say you've seen. Not only did JJ look great, he's a five-star, like, prince that was promised, big-time recruit that so far, yeah, it's only been one full game or one start, looks to be up to the billing. That's the first time in the Harbaugh era you can say that. How many QBs have come through Michigan where it's like, just wait till this guy plays. Just wait till this guy plays. Just wait till this guy plays. Like eight of them. Eight of them. Joe Milton, Brandon Peters, Dylan McCaffrey, Shea Patterson, uh, uh, John O'Corn. So many of them where it's like, just wait. Harbaugh handpicked this guy and they stink. You got to feel pretty good that J.J. was one of those guys. Maybe the apex of those guys and he looks the real fucking deal. But it's funny. MSU fans on Twitter are like, of course he looks good. He's only played cupcakes. Dude, he looks they're like Michigan's going to be good. I know it's cupcakes. I know it's Hawaii and CSU. And then they got UConn again at home. How the fuck did they get the schedule? But they look great. Michigan's going to beat everybody not named Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan State, or potentially Iowa. They might win all those games too, but every other game is a lock. The only chance they have of losing is at Iowa, Michigan State, Ohio State, Penn State. They're going to beat Iowa probably. They're going to beat Penn State probably. Iowa, Ohio State and MSU are like the only two games that Michigan is going to be in for a battle. Other than that, they look like they're going to kill everybody. I do want to see their defense go up against a legit offense, but I think this offense will hum against legit defenses. They have so many weapons. The offensive line's good. The running backs are good. JJ looks great. Like Michigan's going to be good. It is what it is. So there's not a whole lot to say. Like the Lions, that's why the Lions game, it's fun to break down. I was excited. There's so much to talk about because it was back and forth. There's good, there's bad, there's okay, right? There was adversity. They battled back. Michigan State smacked Akron after like the first quarter. It was, you know, this game's over. Um, everybody outside of Peyton Thorne looked good. Michigan smacked Hawaii and it was same deal. The one question mark was what's JJ got? Fucking it. He's got it, and they killed him. Everybody looked good. So a couple good wins, 2-0, and as they both should be. I'm hoping, you know, MSU, tough one. First test for either team on the road at Washington this week. I think they should beat him. We opened as like two-and-a-half-point dogs, which is shocking to me. I know Michael Penix, he's a little scary, but I still feel like we should smack Washington, so we'll see. First test for either team this weekend. Michigan with another cupcake against UConn, who didn't even know they had a football team. Um, so they should kill them once again, another tune up. And then the Lions got the commanders. Um, I just want this will this is I think probably the schedule we're gonna do is Monday or Tuesday we'll do the recaps, and then Thursday or Friday we'll look forward to the games of that weekend as long as football season's going. So appreciate everybody who uh listens along, everybody who supports. We got new merch coming out. All last week we had the 2022 MSU design on sale. Those are now gone. I may put the hoodie on sale for a day in case you missed it. This weekend, we're going to have the Michigan. If you're a Michigan football fan, the Michigan 2022 design go on sale this weekend. And then next weekend, we're going to have a Lions design go on sale for the weekend. So if you're a Lions fan, Michigan fan, keep those eyes peeled. The cleanest, most unique streetwear, vintage sportswear merch in the game for your Lions, for your Wolverines, for your Spartans. It's coming out on a weekly basis. I'm always churning out shirts. So follow the second string on Instagram. Um, follow me on Twitter also. And just follow me. I always post them when they're on sale and when they close just to keep the charts. So I appreciate everybody who supports. Appreciate everyone listening, buying the shirt, spreading the word, all that good stuff. Long episode today. But first week of the NFL and college. Felt like I was in heaven. It's good to be back. We'll catch you guys later this week.